Several years ago, we participated and attended an annual technology summit in Texas. To say that Texas was an eye-opening experience for my girls would be an understatement. Someone might say Texas is like a different country, especially the dirt track races at Grayson County Speedway. See what I'm talking about? Quite the contrast to SoCal. And we're not even gonna begin to talk about Walmart bingo. Now, in Texas, they have these good old boys. They're good old Texans. And here are some things you'll never hear a good old boy from Texas say. Now, you might easily hear somebody from California say this, but you'll never hear a good old boy from Texas say something like, I thought Graceland was tacky. You'll never hear, you can't feed that to a dog, or that deer head takes away from the decor of this room, or has anybody seen my sideburn trimmer? That TV wrestling's all fake. I just couldn't find a thing to buy at Walmart today. Would you trim the fat off that steak before you bring it to me? My fiance, Paula Joe, is registered at Neiman Marcus. No, you'll never hear a good old boy from Texas say any of those things, but there are two things that I want to bring to your attention that you'll never hear God say. One is, you're so good, you don't need my grace and forgiveness. Another thing you'll never hear God say is, you're so bad, you're beyond the reach of my grace and forgiveness. One thing we all have in common here on planet Earth is we're sinners by nature and by choice. And we all need a savior. In Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3, Paul's just been pounding the fact that we're all sinners. Then starting with chapter 4, he starts talking about how we can be made righteous before God through faith. Now he's going to use a word or phrase nine times in chapter 4. It's the word credited or credited for righteousness. We all know what credit lines are. And in this series, I'm going to be talking about a credit line of righteousness. Look in chapter 4 and let's start at the top of the chapter. I just want to show you a few times, several times that he uses that phrase. So his first use is in the last part of verse 3. It says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Then the last part of verse 5, it says, his faith is credited as righteousness. And in the last part of verse 6, it says, to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. In other words, nine times in this chapter, Paul uses that phrase, credited as righteousness. If you have the King James Bible, it says imputed for righteousness. Actually, it's a financial word used in accounting, meaning to write something down in the asset side of the ledger. So God has credited everyone who has faith, righteousness, plus. Let's pick up with verse 16 and go to the end of the chapter as we talk about this credit line of righteousness. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed. That's a word we're going to come back to. To all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. That's what the name Abraham means, father of many nations or father of many people. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. Notice these two statements about God. The God who gives life to the dead, that's the first thing it says about God, and calls things that are not as though they were. Let's talk about Abraham. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old. Now, that's pretty accurate. Actually, he was 99, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Sarah and Abraham gave birth to a son, Isaac, when he was 99 and she was 90. 
Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. This is why, here's that phrase again, it was credited to him as righteousness. Now you're saying, well, all that is about Abraham. Now, what about me? Well, this is for you. Verse 23, the words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Then verse 25 is a great verse about what Jesus did. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. I want to talk to you about a credit line in this series. I think most of you have an idea what a credit line is. And if I was to ask how many of you have a credit line with a financial institution right now, probably only some of you would say you think a credit line is just a kind of formal loan. Here's a good definition of what a credit line is. A credit line is defined as any relationship for which a future revolving promise to lend is in place. The nature of the future agreement to lend may be under a formal loan agreement or a revolving note. And listen to this. Any credit card is a line of credit. If you have a credit card, you have a credit line. That card means that you can go into any business and you can swipe that card through a machine for food, or materials, or entertainment, or anything. What it is saying is the institution that issued the credit card is saying to those businesses, we're good for that amount. We'll pay that amount. Of course, then you have to repay them. Somebody said the problem with credit today is that those that need credit the most can't get it. And those who are qualified for credit usually don't need it. Well, if you have a credit card, you have a credit line. Now, let me explain this to you spiritually. God looks at you and he looks at me and he says, I'm giving you a status of righteousness. All the righteousness of Jesus Christ is available to you. And I'm giving it to you. All you have to do is access it. All you have to do is activate it. Now, that's what we're talking about here. And next week, I want to begin showing you three things about your credit line of righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for the credit card, the credit line that you've extended to us of righteousness. And Lord, as we continue to understand that credit line in the next few weeks, I pray that we would realize just not only what it means, that credit line of righteousness, but how, not, and not only how we get it, but that that credit line is through grace and that it's guaranteed by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Open the eyes of the blind Purify our hearts in your fire Jesus, have your